Okay. Hello. Welcome back to JM Week. Oh, what up? We have Check our, time. We have Cross 107 versus PCM. Except their tag is now Vowed Opinio, so maybe we should refer to them as that. Alright, you guys are good to go. I nice. disagree. I think his opinion's invalid on principle. Damn, that's that, that's tough. <laughs> you can never be correct. That's messed up. One, go. Oh, I mean, is that supposed to be green up here? It's not, but we've kept it that way because no one followed the instructions that Chirk gave to make it the proper color. That's a classic. Anyway, um, we have PCM who is following the JM Week X color scheme, so at least we have a one part of the UI that's in congruence with the theme. <laughs> I, I just think it looks like that particular game watch looks really disgusting from no, the green. I think there's way worse game watch outs, so like like the yellow one where it's like murky yellow. I think that one's pretty bad. You mean the piss alt? Yeah, I wasn't gonna say that. How but... can you dislike the piss alt? It looks weird, man. <laughs> Damn. You heard it here first, folks. They don't like the piss alt. <laughs> anyway, we have um very a very aerial matchup. It's pretty much just going to be spamming aerial moves and then some ground moves to kill, just as we've seen with that down smash. Yeah, so I played a bit of this matchup into Purple Copper Man earlier as often. Basically what I found out was Game of Watch moves have good range and good priority, so it's really hard to beat them out. Oh yeah, um, especially that frame 3 up here, I believe, you just have to respect that move, unfortunately. It's very privileged, but you know, every character's got to have some ridiculous thing, and that's definitely Game & Watch's. What's Puffs? Um, probably just like, being able to press aerial buttons in your face and like have like infinite jumps. It's it can be very threatening to a lot of characters. True. Well, that, the, the aerial drift very well here. is like very hard to get around for a lot of characters, especially mm. those that don't have a very good movement. Yeah. So the thing that's happening here is Christos is trying to attack and he's sort of falling into Willem's moves more than he's like winning neutral. And Willow was just like playing the out of shield game and doing it well. Yeah, um, interesting that Cross here is trying to go for some like F smash reads to get the kill, which I don't typically see as like a strategy from him. Oh my god. Oh my. <laughs> that, that was pretty criminal. Yeah, so, um, I don't think Game Watch oh, has a lot happened? of. I don't think Game Watch has a lot of N lag on all of the smash attacks, even though they probably should. So that's another thing that Game Watch really you have to respect. Yeah. Especially with an up smash because it's also, I think, invincible on the helmet part. So like, you did see Cross there just trying to go around it just to not get hit by it and then try and come in after the move launch, but then instant down smash right after the up smash. Yeah, and it's not even just that it's a, like, the head is invincible, it's also just very large, like the range is a lot bigger than you'd think it is. Yeah. Like Game Watch is one of those characters where the hitboxes are kind of deceptive. Because it feels like they're always a little bit larger than they actually look. Yeah, I mean, it's especially because like something like the fishing ball, it's like, what is the hitbox of a fishing ball supposed to be anyway? It's kind of hard mm. to tell, but that move just seems to always connect. But. Definitely, um, at least Cross has managed to find Ooh. the first stock and pretty nice sequence there, narrowly avoiding some up smashes, which mm. are definitely going to kill at this percent. Yeah, dude, that interruption with the, the down smash, of the up smash with the pound was crazy. Yeah. All right. And yeah. it's just gonna... There we go, the helmet. It's just, it's just too didn't, good. <laughs> didn't manage to get a move out and he just got helmeted. Game number one to the Game & Watch. Yeah, I think um, Kyrsos was in the middle of jumping and just gets caught by that up smash out of shield. I'm trying to think of like an incorrect like way to interpret the acronym PCM. <laughs> um, like, let's it's see. Not, not Purple Coffin Man, something else. Paper the P, I'm thinking paper, passive paper or cut. Placid. Placid. Paper cut, man. <laughs> 
Paper Cut Man is like really threatening. It's like he's not gonna beat you up. He's gonna like <laughs> Wait, give yeah, you like no. a paper cut on like the part in between like your thumb and like oh, your index. No. That's like the that's like the final smash. Oh my god. We'll probably see, yeah, sticking with the Game & Watch was working quite well for him in mm. the first game. Yeah, I think the thing that Kristoff needs to do, so in my experience, what Willem really likes to do in this matchup and in general is just to play the Outer Shield game. Yeah. And Kristoff needs to do two things. He needs to respect Willem's moves and grab him. Yeah, I mean, traditionally, shield, um, if someone's shielding, grab is the option that beats um, shielding, so... Would be interesting to see if Kristoff can get some safe grabs here, because mm. it is tough to grab Game Watch, but it's I, I think with shield grabbing, it's more of like a reaction to like the player's habits rather than like any frame data wise sort of discussion. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, that Gator. was a very Good very nice aerial string. He's fine. He's not um, fine. Good follow-up. Yeah, see, that's that's what Jigglypuff is also like really, really good at. Probably one of the best in the game is just that aerial edge guard, just because she basically dominates the aerial space by just floating into you. Whereas yeah. other characters are more restricted in the directions that they can move quickly. But that's the thing, Game Watch can challenge that aerial space because of his moves just being so big. Yeah, um, but I think what happened with that edge guard was um, PCM like upbeat a bit early, which allowed Puff to go in for like an edge guard after the upbeat already happened. I think that was what was happening. Yeah. Yeah, it left him vulnerable and he just sort of got out timed by getting hit before he could air dodge through it. And even then Kristoff probably would have had a follow-up. Yeah, because I mean Puff is like I don't even remember how many jumps, but it's a lot. Nine. It's nine. It's nine? Yeah. That is crazy. Speaking of nines, if Willem is listening to this, he'll want to get a nine now. <laughs> you don't even need a nine against Puff. Like, <laughs> yeah, you just, you just hit like a, you just hit a key to unlock the next stock. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, this game has been really good because you've seen the momentum has absolutely just shifted in the favor of, of uh, Kroz here. I think yeah, definitely I think... playing better around the shield. Yeah, I think Kroz just needed a little bit more time to warm up as well, because he sort of just like came here, played yeah, one game into me, and then came in, yeah. on. Meanwhile, Willem's been like practicing all day. <laughs> so he's nice and toasty. Yeah. I'd love to see a little bit more respect of Willem's options from Christos here. In terms of just like the out of shield or just in general? In general, because he's sort of just like getting hit by a lot of stray moves, like when Willem when he's in Willem's vicinity, because he's trying to like sort of go for his own stuff and he keeps getting hit by Willem's stuff in turn. Right, so it's more like picking the timing to do your offense. Yeah, exactly. Because in basically every oh. scramble situation we've seen, Willem has won out. Yeah, I mean, there is in this matchup, there has just been a lot of, like, random scrambles. But now we are one piece, or one stock apiece, with the, the stage, the stage spike taking out Willem's second stock. Mm -hmm. Getting some nice combos there. Yeah, and that's the other thing is respecting that up B because he's tried to edge guard and I don't think he's succeeded like a single time. Yeah, I think um edge guarding near the the ledge is is kind of risky because if you get bounced up into the side of the stage by Game Watch's up B, you could just die early to like the, the tech. Mm. Depending on how many jumps you have left. But well, yeah, if like like in this scenario, right? Oh never mind, you just key back down, but like if it's a bit further out, like kind of right here, it's a lot more threatening for Game Watch to get back against Puff. True, very true. But yeah, the reason I'd like to see those grabs is because a lot of Purple Coffin Man's neutral wins have just been out of shielding. Yeah, it's just a lot of stray hits um, in this matchup. Yeah, exactly right. And it's like, Kristos would be taking, I feel like, a lot less damage if he was like, Opting for a ledge trap versus an edge guard. Yeah, and maybe just more running up and like doing a defensive shield because I don't think PCM has been going for mini grabs either, so 
like shielding against um, game yeah, launches, like attacks, true. might be like just in general like not a bad option. And then striking after that. <laughs> yeah, and he, see that was good there because he was he was wary of the key and he respected it and he didn't get hit by it. Dude, right, this is patented PCM strategy. When it's like, um, when it's like last hit, just spam all of the smash attacks, which unfortunately <laughs> is actually not a bad strategy. But, but the man. <laughs> that was like that was really interesting actually. Um, because I think the pound slowed down the momentum. That's not the instant replay. This is instant replay. Yeah, I think the pound slowed down the momentum, so it was like right above, and then managed mm. to nair from behind for the kill, which was pretty nice. Yeah, very clean. Like I like that. He waited for his opening, and he took it. And he got it. I I would not have pounded that. That felt so risky, but you know, I'm not a puff player, so you know, I actually have to think about when I'm pressing the well, jump. See, that's button. the thing, it's the secret tech, right? It's like you pound, but they don't know that you can immediately nair out of it. And yeah, you abuse pound that. is pound is kind of like a very heinously ambiguous move where you just do this and then it's like, when can they act again? I don't know. And also it's so active until like they can act again. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why Sakurai looked at like Pound in Pokemon and was like, yeah, this, this, this is a good move. And we're gonna put this in Smash. And it's gonna like fuck me. Meanwhile, up. meanwhile, rest and sing. Yeah, actually, the entire kit does not make any sense if you like bring it back into like a Pokemon context. Dude, rest except instead of like healing you for full and then making you like. Inactive for two turns instead. Oh, oh no! Maybe that was commentator's curse right there. We started talking about um, rest, and unfortunately, gets rested into the next stop by his yeah, own also, mistake. Willem hit a, I think I just heard Willem hit a nine while Kristoff was on the angel platform. That's so funny. Imagine in Pokemon if you just rested and there was just like a one percent chance for your opponents to just instantly die. Just like no, no interaction. You just get explosion. <laughs> Imagine if Rest acted like Focus Punch, but at the start of the turn. <laughs> at the start of the turn. That's that's not how anything Priority. should work. It's Priority Focus Punch, but it sends you to sleep for two turns. A fake out, but it kills you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, fake out could just kill you if you're like. Shedinja or something, I guess. Actually, wait, no, it's fake normal type. Not Shedinja. Uh, for some reason, I thought fake out was like dark type because it's like it's like a scummy move, because and it's I always so associate heinous, dark yeah. types with like scummy moves because generally how it's themed. Yeah, it's like the scum type. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I think dark type kind of got a bad reputation from the start. Mm. I think dark types can be noble as well because it's literally. I think in Japanese it's literally the evil type. Oh wow. I wish they kept that, it'd be so funny. It's like, I'm <laughs> evil, evil type. type. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, that would actually be way funny, huh? Did you ever have like a custom type that you really wanted in Pokemon? Um... I don't know, I, I think... One type I always thought was like really cool, when it's, but it's not actually really a type, it's like the question mark, question mark, question mark type. That's so true, wait. Yeah, it's just right? like, I sort of like curse or something, and I'm like, what does this mean? Like, what is going on? I was thought it was like a secret type that you could unlock or some shit, but it's, it's I don't know. <laughs> it's just like a weird situation. I mean, situation technically thing. I feel like in Gen 1 it is. Okay, yeah. yeah, but nothing in Gen 1 acts as it should. <laughs> It's like true. if you, if, if like, you told us to like program a game in two weeks, and like that, that's like the best that we could do is like the Gen 1. <laughs> Damn, roasting the Gen 1 devs. Hey, they did a pretty good job, but like there are definitely some um, some interesting things you can do in that in those games. True. So we've got Purple Combat Man in the lead here in this crucial, crucial third game. But not too much of a lead, like one good hit from Jigglypuff and mm. the game watch is gonna explode. Yeah, he got a very good, like, f tilt catch on Kristoff to seal out that second stock. Yeah, I f tilt think... is a good, actually, like a good kill option, to be honest, like, off the side. I think they're doing a good job both of, like, racking up damage and hitting each other, so the thing that's really gonna decide this set is, like, who can get the kills first. 
Yeah, I'm actually, I'm, I feel like I'm seeing, especially in this game, a lot more like fade back um, aerials from Kristos. So the the aerials on Chiotic back air become a lot safer because you end up a lot further away. Yeah, and that's what he's like sort of best at. And he just like needed that time to like get back in the groove. Also, can we appreciate that Kristos has brought this back in spite of that early SD? That's true. I was too busy like talking about random Pokemon bullshit to notice, <laughs> but yeah. Still a bit on the back foot here, but definitely something oh, that no! could be made back. I, That's exactly I think the Pop's thing fine. you were worried about. I think Pop's fine. Yeah, he's that fine. Was some custy, that was some custy getting back to stage tech. I've never seen that before. I love how he took all that effort to like use minimal jumps to get back, and then he just immediately jumps off ledge and uses like four jumps. <laughs> okay, I'm back on stage. Back to my usual game plan. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. nice parry into the chair though. Okay, good recognition. No, the parry into an up smash! Wow. You hate to see it. You also, do. ultra instinct shit twice in a row. It was also good, good recognition from Kristoff not to just like go in because of the neutral B being a bait, but unfortunately, he will get parried. And when your pound gets parried, you there's die. not much more you get than that, except death. I was trying to think of a P word and I couldn't come up with one. Mm, pontoon. What? Pontoon! How could you forget? So true, Jerry. So true. No, no, no. Like, like a concept. Uh, is like a pontoon parody. not a concept? <sighs> parody. But like P A R I T Y, not P A R O D Y. Oh yeah, like, like yeah, like the nerd parody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like the like the terrible fire emblem skill. I don't even know about that one. So basically, it's a skill that like shuts off you and your opponent's crit rate or something. Oh, okay. like, that sounds, FE4 or that something. sounds unfun. Yeah. <laughs> wow, Game of Watch Nair is quite a good move to shock for platforms. Okay, no, it's an FE like nine ten. It's even worse. Oh wow. Uh, yeah, this game PCM has gotten some really nice spacing with some backers just to catch up. I kind of overshooting the drift with a backer hitbox. Oh yeah, I didn't do the thing. My bad. I'm too I'm too locked in to care about the <laughs> the UI. <laughs> what a set to get locked in on. Dude, this is starting to look dicey for Christ. Are we about to see a Purple Coffin Man upset? That would be interesting. Might be the first of his career, actually. Yeah, see, like, with, with, with the net, it's like, what are you even supposed to, like, pass when you get hit by, like, fish falling out of a bowl? It's like, am I supposed to know what the range on that is? Yeah, exactly. That's the range of, like, the helmet, bro. Yeah, I don't know. Game Watch is working, like, 20 different occupations. You kind of have to respect the hustle. It's so actually, true. I don't know what occupation involves, like, tipping fish out of a fishbowl, but I'm sure it's a pretty respectful <laughs> profession. Uh, it probably just works in an aquarium. <laughs> and he's aquarium. the imports. The antiquarium. No, he's putting the fish out of the fishbowl and into the actual, like, proper, like, exhibit. No, he's clearly, clearly he's throwing fish at people. Oh my god. And, no, he's cooking the fish. The fish come out of the, the pan. So, like, I think Mr. Game Watch just hates fish or something. Hmm. Yeah, I think, like, this is really a case of matchup where a lot of Puff's usual game plan just, like, doesn't work against Game Watch. And we're really seeing that here. Yeah, I mean, I think we are still yet to see a grab in like four games. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, like neither of them has grabbed each other. So I, I do think there is more like, um, there's more layers to this matchup that we're just not seeing, just because they're just opting for like basically just aerials. Yeah, and that's the, like I think a big reason why. Parody Coffin Man is winning because 
Wait, maybe it's like parody cough maestro. What does that even mean? <laughs> Uh, I don't know what parody means, but Cough Maestro is pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> sure, I'll take your word for it. He just orchestrates people coughing. He intentionally he puts, like, dust in the Jonathan air. Jonathan COVID. <laughs> Jonathan COVID! <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're definitely seeing um, Cross struggling to get in. I think Willem's just really done a good job of catching on to like the approaches and just picking the option that beats it. Yeah, and also like, he just knows he needs to hold his shield and then he's gonna get a conversion out of it with another shield. Because like, Christos is gonna either swing at him or just not like pick an option that beats his shield. Like a grab. Don't worry, we'll see the grab one day. No, oh, my that's how we won't. <laughs> <laughs> no grabs. I think I, I... Someone needs to, like, watch the setback in my like, comment whether there were any grabs and what the time I'm of the grab sure was. I'm pretty sure there wasn't any. But, you know, I'm usually wrong about many things, so that could be one of them. <laughs> well, anyway, congratulations to Purple Comman on his first upset. Possibly ever, but at least of the season. Yeah, nice to see more upsets, you know, shakes the bracket up and, um... Or make next week's matchups more unpredictable.